the little stage, the coolest stage in Campus Party. We've got hardware hacks, modding, robotics, and space. So cool toys and inspiration, the stars, everything you dreamed of. Today, we've got a special guest uh, from Microsoft. We have Gunther Logemann and his assistant, Daniel Weixman, who will be demonstrating how the Kinect works, what you can do with it, and a lot more. Um, Gunther has about 20 years of experience as a developer for Microsoft and embedded systems, and he's a project manager and many more things. So I'll let him uh, introduce himself. So please give a big round of applause for Gunther Logemann, Daniel Weixman. OK, hello. Um, yeah, hello and welcome from uh, me. I'm, my name is uh, Gunther Logemann, and I'm here with uh, Daniel Meixner. Uh, we are both developer evangelists, and um, this is our last Microsoft-sponsored show on, uh, on this campus party. And uh, it's about Kinect for Windows. Um, there's a little mix-up with the title, probably. Um, there was an 8 uh, in, the, in the title. There was an 8 in the title, um, which is that we have also Windows 8 shows here. Um, but this is about Windows, uh, about Kinect for Windows. And before I... Hello? It's better? OK. So before I start and go to the details of the Kinect for Windows, how many people of you have actually experienced with, Win with the Kinect on the Xbox and played games on the Xbox? OK, that's, that's a lot. And um, so we are not talking about gaming with the Xbox. We are talking about how you can actually use the Kinect or the Kinect sensor um, to add more functionality to your Windows application and have a complete new way of how you can interact with PCs um, or with PC-based machines. And um, of course, robotics is one part. This is actually my favorite part uh, of the whole Kinect for Windows story. But there's a there's whole lot more, like um, user interfaces, how you interact with gestures, how you interact um, with voice, um, with the Kinect. And all this gives you, in a very easy way, that you can integrate this into your applications. So before we come um, to the actual demo of the Kinect, um, I would like to give you a short introduction of what is the Kinect. Um, when we started the development of the Kinect, um, it was actually the goal to um, have a, a user interface for a gaming device and a complete new user interface which doesn't allow any additional hardware uh, for the user to carry around to have any um, optical uh, things which can be detected by a hardware device like, like a, a little bubble or um, any other sensors you have to carry in your hand. And um, to be honest, in the beginning, when we uh, looked into <coughs> this from the robotics co uh, perspective and from the robotics community, we all said, well, this will never really work, right? And um, we were really surprised that um, with the right hardware and with the right hardware and software integration, you can actually do something happen here. And um, it turns out that the Kinect was such a, such a success in the gaming space, and everybody who, who experienced this because knows that uh, it is very extremely accurate, it is extremely robust, and uh, you can actually real interact with the, with the Xbox. So we took the next step and um, said, this is, um, we saw the demand, uh, the Kinect gets hacked like right away, um, by open by the open source community, it's nothing wrong about this, and we are not jealous or something. It's it's great that you basically created the demand for these type of devices, and then uh, all of a sudden we decide it's it's good to have um, an official Microsoft SDK, uh, which allows you to integrate this into your application. So. <coughs> If we look into the, um, the details of the Kinect, first of all, uh, the Kinect has an uh, infrared, uh, infrared um, 
image sender, which basically broadcasts a grid of infrared points uh, across the room. And this picture uh, will be received by an infrared camera. And those, the, the sender and the receiver actually makes it happen that you can create a depth image of your environment. And in combination with uh, an RGB camera, you are able to uh, have an image of the world, which is not just a picture, it's a 3D picture which every pixel has a very accurate depth information on top of the uh, actually um, color information. So in addition to this, and this is something which is probably new for most of the, the Kinect for Windows is also a uh, microphone array. And I come to this later, um, that you can actually detect where the source of um, the audio is. And you can follow uh, and combine this with the tracked objects in, within the image. <clears throat> so if we go a little bit more into the detail, the, the Kinect for Windows or the Kinect itself have two different modes. The normal mode, this is what we know from, uh, from the Kinect for the Xbox. It's about 1.2 to 3.5 meters, which is the active range where you can really interact with the, uh, with the device. The Kinect for Windows itself has an addition um, which allows it to have more, um, I would say, uh, gesture interactions uh, if you are close to a PC, for example. And that's why we have um, <clears throat> a mode which allows um, to get the uh, information between uh, 0 0.8 and 2.5 uh, meters. In addition, um, you have a horizontal range of 75.5 uh, degrees and a vertical range of 43.5 uh, degrees. Uh, this can be extended by um, controlling the motor, and this gives you another uh, plus minus of 27 degrees. <coughs> and most important, I said this already, um, the depth image gives you, for every pixel you have in your RGB uh, uh, picture, or which, which from the stream for the, uh, from the RGB camera, you actually have a depth information. And the depth information is not um, uh, the direction the, from the point of the camera, it's the, it's the area or the, um, the level of the camera, and it gives you the absolute distance between uh, the camera and uh, the object. <clears throat> Most important, and this is where the Kinect is really optimized for, is the skeleton detection. So we are able to detect two skeletons, but we are able to track up to six persons. So we get, uh, from, for example, from two players, the exact information of every joint in his skeleton. Uh, but we know that there are probably another six people uh, in this picture, and we can track them and we can differentiate them. <clears throat> we are also able to um, uh, track a full body skeleton, and in the Connect for Windows, we are able to also track uh, sitting persons. So a lot of questions are coming up there. Um, what is happening if, for example, um, a cat or a dog running in front of the Connect? And um, because the algorithm is optimized for detecting human, humans and human bodies, uh, it will not detect anything which is um, crawling or which is, um, looks like a dog. Um, so we, uh, we are optimized to really um, detect um, human bodies. <clears throat> it goes very, to very small bodies, like uh, even my son with 80 centimeters, it's already detected. So uh, you can also use this for, for example, child applications. So for those skeletons which are tracked uh, <clears throat> in the detailed level, we have for every joint of a human body, we actually um, have the absolute position within the uh, 3D world. So for every single picture, uh, sorry, for every single 
joined. We have um, the x, y, and z dimension within the range of the um, the connect. And um, Daniel will show this uh, a little bit later how easy it is to actually get to this information of the connect. And uh, I said this already as well. Um, we have the F capability, so the, the Kinect for Windows or the Kinect itself is, uh, is a microphone array, and you can actually detect where the audio is coming from. So if you think about, for example, um, building a robot which is able or want to track a certain person and want to react to voice commands, you can actually optimize the recognition of the audio uh, by um, pointing the audio or the microphone area to a certain degree, or you can even track um, the <coughs> um, the audio from a track person, or you can optimize the microphone so that you always get the audio from the person which is within the um, the range of the Kinect and it's tracked by the Kinect. So, how does it look like from the software architecture? And I said, <coughs> we, um, we, there are a lot of other open source um, Kinect uh, libraries out there, which allows you to already build application with the Kinect. We as Microsoft, we offer a, a complete SDK, which is uh, very well integrated into the operating system. It's fully supported. Um, it's uh, running under all our operating system, including Windows 8. Um, <coughs> it uh, has all the drivers. And um, most important, it is possible to build applications which are commercial with these. So um, the, the main difference between the Kinect for the Xbox and the Kinect for Windows is not so much the hardware. In fact, it's actually the same hardware. And you as students or as um, non-commercial application developers, um, you can use this without any licensing. You can download the SDK. All the software is for free. Um, you can download it, use it, build your application, and, and um, uh, make, th make these application public. Um, but if you want to have commercial application or build commercial applications with the Kinect SDK, it re is required to actually actively detect the Kinect for Windows. And your application should only run on the Kinect for Windows, which is obviously a little bit more expensive if you sell it through whatever online store. <clears throat> so from the software architecture, um, you get from the Kinect an image stream, you get a depth stream, and you get the audio stream. And everything goes through our um, natural user interface library, and you have an easy way to build your application on top of this. And you can build it with C Sharp, uh, with C++. Um, it's a .NET integration. Uh, you can set additional libraries on top of this, like AForge or CV, whatever uh, is your favorite for building whatever your robot or your application. Um, you can... Um, use whatever you like on top of this. If you look into a little bit more details here, we, um, we provide the required drivers for Windows. Um, we have a USB camera stack, an audio um, stack for this. Um, we provide the .NET interfaces um, and um, allow the application to be built in C Sharp, for example, based on .NET. Uh, we also integrate into other APIs, which comes with Windows already, like the Speech API um, and the core Windows Audio, which allows you, for example, um, building complete echo cancellation uh, systems for complex video conferencing systems or something like this. And of course, we are providing a complete um, natural user interface API which gives you all the capabilities of the Kinect, like um, skeleton tracking, like um, 
uh, audio, the, uh, the audio control, the motor control, the LED control, and all the other hardware um, interfaces required uh, to actually control the sensor. Okay, so I would like to uh, welcome uh, Daniel Meixner. Um, he will help me a little bit with the demos, so I will actually be his uh, demo monkey, and he will do the programming. Okay, hello everybody. Um, the great thing is that with the Kinect SDK, um, if, if you download it, you get a lot of examples. Um, and you also get the sample code. So uh, if you want to get started with implementing, you simply take a look at the code of the samples and you can very easily get started. Um, I will show you now some of the samples which are really great and show what the Kinect is able to do. So you can build your own application around it just to get an impression. I'll show you the demos. So, we will start up the Kinect, ex um, yeah, exactly, the Kinect Developer Toolkit. If you download the SDK, you will get the Kinect Developer Toolkit, and with the Kinect Developer Toolkit, you will find all the samples. Um, as you can see here on the screen, uh, it's <laughs> these are pretty much examples and you could run them all just to get an impression of what the uh, Kinect is able to do. I will start off with the Kinect Explorer because the Kinect Explorer shows you very good m every feature the Kinect offers. So um, I will press the play button here and here we go. Here's the Kinect Explorer. As you can see on the left side we have a uh, RGB image, color image. Um, Gunther is standing in it. He's al already tracked. If he moves his arms, you can see all the different joints um, that are recognized. Move your legs. Yeah, exactly. Works great. On the upper right corner, you see the depth stream. So um, this is kind of a, um, a, a visualized depth screen. So. Um, the combination of the uh, color, st uh, color stream and the depth stream um, results in the tracked skeleton. You can uh, use the Connect Explorer to um, change the resolution or to change the resolution of the depth stream. So basically, you can modify all the parameters you're able to set um, for the Connect, and you can also use the Connect Explorer to modify the angle. So. There's a little motor built in, and I can make the camera move a little. So, but I switch it back so that Gunther will be found completely on that thing. Yeah, worked. Um, you can see down there the audio angle. So, if you had a uh, single audio source, which is uh, quite uh, impossible <laughs> in this area, um, the the audio source would be recognized, but Okay, we have got a lot of background, background noise here, so this is, um, we have a, a little um, uh, noise here. But that's not a problem. So I think this is a quite a good example to get an impression of what you can do with the Kinect, because you, you can track persons quite easily. Um, but I've got another example. And this is about face detection. I don't know if you knew that the Kinect SDK in the latest version is able to detect faces. I will show you that with this face tracking visualization demo. So we'll start this is still um, targeting on Gunther. So Gunther, come closer. Yeah, he recognizes Gunther's face or Gunther smile for me. Make, say, oh. You see, he's tracked. The, the face is recognized and the little, so this little smiley uh, reflects his face, which is uh, <laughs> a kind of cool stuff. So um, you could uh, build an application that displays your mood if you're very grumpy sitting in front of your PC, like you could uh, update your smiley on uh, Skype or on Facebook or whatever. OK, that's the face detection. But um, there's one very important thing. OK. Um, when you're developing, I don't know, typically you're alone, sitting in front of the PC, and then you have the problem uh, when you're working with the Kinect, because if you want to debug, you've got to stand up, walk around, wave, jump back, and check the breakpoint. 
So we now have the Kinect um, Studio, which, which allows you to record movements. I'll show you that. So I'll trigger the Kinect Explorer again. So, and then I'll start the Kinect Studio. So here we go. And as you can see, we have this, this little connect but connection button here. So I can press this connect button and connect with a running application. Oh. Yeah. So in, in the background, he rec uh, the program recognizes that the Connect Explorer is running. I connect with the Connect Explorer application and capture the stream that is sent to the Connect Explorer application and get all the movements of Gunther that are sent to the Connect Explorer application. So now I can start um, recording. So Gunther, please move. Dance a little, exactly. So let's, that's enough, thanks. I say stop and then I can uh, check every single frame of Gunther's movements and I can also start playing start replaying Gunther's movements as you see and I can also loop this so and now I could start implementing could start testing my application can start debugging while uh, um, the connect um, frames, the, the frames taken are sent to my application, which allows a very easy debugging experience. Um, there's one more cool window. We have this color viewer on the upper left. We have this dep depth viewer. We could um, integrate another window, another view, the 3D view. And the 3D view gives you an impression of what a reconstruction of the 3D room looks like based on the data of the Kinect. So, um, you see, I can move the angle and look at Gunther from different perspectives, even from, from behind, but of course from behind we don't know the color data, so it's kind of transparent. And I think this really shows um, the power of Connect because you have the depth data combined with the color data. Okay. So, um, these were the, the basic tools, the scenarios that um, come with the Kinect Studio if you download it. But um, I just want to show you what it looks like in code. So if you really start implementing your own application, and I have implemented a uh, very simple application, I will fire it up. And what this application does is, it simply records the movements of somebody standing in front of the Kinect. So I press record, and it will take will capture 200 frames of the person standing in front of the Kinect. And when it recognized 200 frames, then it will enable this step through button. OK, we are done. It has recognized 200 frames. And now I will replace them step by step. And I have, I'm not sure if the contrast is good enough. You see this three quarters. And I will step through. And we've got the side view, the front view, and the top view of all the, um, of all the joints that uh, the system has found. So best is you take a look at the front view. This is how Gunder was seen by the Kinect camera, like this. I think you can uh, imagine some lines between the dots, and then you would recognize this as a person, but this is really only the joints. And I um, computed a side view and a top view, which is quite easy because you get X, Y, and Z coordinates for every point, for every joint in the room. So if I step through, you can see Gunther's movements. Okay, what does this look like in code? Just the, um, the, the reading of the X, Y, Z coordinates. Um, we go in here. And I set a breakpoint right at, th at this position, and we'll fire it up again. And Gunther, you have to dance for us one last time. We start recording.
Excellent. Um, <laughs> much louder. Um, so basically, the breakpoint was hit, and if I take a look at the at the joints now, this is uh, quite interesting. What is delivered to me? So I will simply uh, add a watch here, and see a collection of of joints. And if I take a deeper look at at what these joints look like. Then I see here in my watch window that the joints have name like, uh, names like hip center, spine, shoulder, head, shoulder left, elbow left, and stuff like that. So this way you get really easy information about what body part um, is delivering uh, values here. And you can then go into a single item here and check out the way this item is descriptive, and you see, okay, you get an X, Y, and Z position. Unfortunately, it's zero, 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 which is obviously a, a, a misinterpretation here of the of the program, but it doesn't matter. You basically get an X y value and uh, Y value and a Z value. So it's very easy to reconstruct persons within a room based on this um, X, Y, Z coordinates. So um, with this, we are kind of done uh, regarding this demo. I think we switch back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so thanks, Daniel. Uh, I think that's a, a pretty impressive demonstration, especially uh, when you saw the um, the recorded stream from uh, from the uh, from the Kinect, uh, which shows you basically the three-dimensional picture and the rendering of uh, every pixel. So I forgot actually that um, the accuracy of this device is quite good. You you actually get within the range of the Kinect. You get for every pixel in th in the RGB stream, you actually get information with an accuracy of four millimeters, which is mostly sufficient enough for um, for if you want to implement this, for example, for a robot. <coughs> um, I would give you some some other resources. How you want to, if you really want to start uh, developing applications uh, on um, by using the Connect for Windows. So we also have uh, a robotics division in Microsoft. Uh, it's Microsoft Robotics, and if you go to www.microsoft.com/robotics, you will actually be able to download the Microsoft Robotics Studio, and um, those guys have developed a reference platform, which is a moving robot um, with a lot of sensors uh, and, of course, a, a space for you where you can place a PC and a mount for, um, for the Kinect. So this, this robot gives you an easy way to get into the world of uh, uh, building robots. Um, and if you are not want to afford this device, it's about $1,000, um, you can actually simulate your robot completely. So the same robot, the same reference platform is modeled in a visualization model uh, of, Kinect, uh, of the robotic studio, and you can build your application, which will run on the real Eddy. This is the working title for, uh, for this uh, robot. Um, it will work on the real robot the same way uh, as in the simulation. So. It's a very easy way, and the Kinect, of course, is fully integrated into the robotic studio and can even interact with the, virtu with the virtual world. So a really great way to get into this uh, if you don't want to build your robot from the scratch. So here are the, the links for um, the resources. Of course, the Kinect SDK. Um, you can download it, as I said. You can use it for free. You can build your robot. Um, by using this SDK. Um, only if you want to deploy this application commercial at one day, um, you need to make sure that this device will run on the Connect for Windows only. Um, you have all the tooling like uh, Visual Studio for free. You can use Visual Studio 2010 Express at the moment. You can also use the latest Visual Studio for this. Um, 
You have Microsoft Robotics Studio, as I said, uh, as a great resource to get into robotics if you're not uh, from Mimosis. And of course, a great research or a great source of information are Microsoft Research, um, which are always doing extremely great things. There are a lot of tons of uh, YouTube videos out there, um, which doing um, all sorts of uh, applications with the Kinect for Windows. And those guys are actually the ones which um, originally developed the uh, Kinect for Windows, the Kinect, and had the idea for the Kinect, and also um, um, developed the SDK. So big thanks to these guys. So I think we are at the end. We have a couple of, time, a couple of minutes time for questions. Any questions? No. Anybody has a question? <laughs> One question over okay, here. Uh, I will be right back. Hi. Is it possible to use two connects at the same time? Um, you can actually run multiple connects on one PC. Of course, you have to make sure that the, um, the handling um, is done by yourself, right? But you can have multiple instances from, from of the Kinect, of course. Um, hi. Does the Kinect still work if you're wearing a poncho or a long, long, uh, long, long skirt, for example? Say this again, I have to go closer to the um, loudspeaker, actually. Does a Kinex still work when you're wearing a poncho or long skirt? So there, of course, are some uh, limitations. Um, so mostly if you have a body with two arms and a head, it will work. So of course, there are some limitations if you are, um, for example, if you take a, a Playmobil um, uh, man in front of the camera, it doesn't work for some reason because it's, it, it looks like that this is um, either too small or has total out of whack um, proportions. So it's, it, there are, of course, limitations to this, uh, but this is what I said. The Kinect for Windows is optimized for detecting human bodies, right? And um, so um, there are also um, some limitations for the light, for example, if you are in direct sunlight, um, as I said, the, the Kinect is using infrared, and if the, the sun is uh, shining directly in front of the Kinect, it's actually totally blind. And um, so that gives you actually the limitations of the Kinect as well. Uh, so if you want to plan, or if you plan to build the Kinect on top of a robot, which should run outside, there's a lot of work to do to actually make sure that um, if it comes to sunlight situations or uh, detecting people which are maybe not people, like um, some artificial paperwork, for example, right? Then uh, it's um, um, it, it, you have to handle this by from the software yourself, actually. Oh, okay. Hi. Uh, I wanted to know at which level the data of the image stream and the depth stream I wondered at which level the um, image data stream and the depth data stream are synchronized. Is it frame-based, pixel-based? It's frame-based. So you get a um, you get a frame-ready event, and then you can you have also functions to actually map the um, uh, the RGB stream or the RGB image with the depth stream image because you can have different resolutions. Uh, on both streams, and then you can basically transform this so that basically the depth stream can um, match to the actually RGB stream. I was wondering, for very fast movements, um, how big the jitter between an depth information on a single pixel and the uh, image data would be. So the image is um, the 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 depth information has a jitter of four millimeters. Um, and you have a frame rate from uh, around um, uh, 30 frames per second. So it's actually possible to detect quite fast uh, movements. All right. It should be uh, enough for most of the use cases. <laughs> Hi. Um, can you ever see the Connect having like a medical use at all? Yeah, there are, there are some. Um, um, some applications, and uh, this is actually one of the 
um, I would say most sophisticated application out there, which is obviously a, um, um, a project in the commercial area. So if you, for example, um, there's a promotion video on our website uh, for the Kinect, which shows that you actually are in the operation um, um, environment. So a doctor basically wants to view uh, like um, screens from the body of the patient and then uh, he wants to move uh, some certain information and because he can't really touch a keyboard or something um, he basically controls all these with gestures and um, there are a lot of different applications um, built on top of the Kinect SDK uh, one is using this robotic space but another major part is basically using this for gesture control, for just controlling your PC or your applications on your PC. Um, we are not talking about controlling Excel with, uh, with gestures or with, um, with your hands. Uh, we are talking about those applications which really require that the, that the user is actually kind of far away from the PC or um, he is not able to get to the keyboard. Um, or a simple other application is uh, like for presentations. So when, um, when I do presentations, um, I have always used a clicker or something. If I could, I just do this for it, go to the next slide. This would be perfect, right? But um, we have also a lot of resources for this. So if you download the SDK, there's actually a, a complete um, documentations about how you implement gestures and um, how you deal with movements um, and for example if you implement a presentation um, or a presentation controller um, if you do like this and swipe to the next uh, slide and implement that this gesture is basically going backwards means if you do this and the presentation just do this is um, means that he basically can't really interact because it will slide one slide forward and this will be the backwards so there are recommendations that you have to implement your gestures in a way that is actually usable. So this one is, for example, the one for uh, going forward. And using the other hand is uh, using the gesture for using uh, going backwards, for example. Can, can it be used for sport training? Say it again. Can, can it be used for sport, sport training? So, yes. Um, so there's another promotion video on this um, where you actually do exercises for, um, uh, with your knees or your body uh, and you can basically make sure that the uh, movement of the body is correct. And yeah, that's, just, that's for example a perfect application for, um, for Kinect for Windows. I would like to ask a question. Is it possible to use this uh, device if you have a dancers under the projection, you know, like just imagine audiovisual performance and you have dancers half in the darkness and uh, covered with some artificial light from the projector? Um, it's, uh, it depends on the situation. There's, um, there are ways that you can optimize the optics with different filters. Um, but uh, if anybody here in the room or in the, in the hall or in the audience uh, is um, working on an application for this. I'm absolutely happy to uh, to help there um, because we um, we have different types of application which are using the X, uh, the Kinect for doing, for example, presentations or uh, special um, marketing um, f tools which uh, allows the user basically to interact with the demonstration. And um, this has to deal with similar situations where the device is actually sitting in, a, in different light situations. And um, so the light situation to optimize this um, will help. Um, we can help you with, uh, with this and uh, basically uh, connect you with the right people within Microsoft if you want to do like projects in there. Okay, thank so. you. Maybe one more question or um, okay, thank you so much for okay. your presentation or if you want to add something. So um, yeah, if you 
as I said, if you want to start working on this, um, we are evangelists in the uh, Microsoft under um facility from uh, from Microsoft, and um, so if you want to start working with uh, building your applications, and uh, we are definitely interested to hear what you are doing. If you're a student or if you're a team somewhere, if you build a robot, just come to us. Let us know. Drop us an email, um, and. Uh, we may come uh, to you and um, see what, how we can help you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay.